we're into the final section of John chapter 5. I called the sermon I preached on this section, uh, Witnesses of the Word. And that's what John shows us here. He shows a number of witnesses who all tell us specific things about Jesus. And he wants us to listen to those witnesses. So as always, I encourage you just to take some time to read through this passage a few times to spot some of the different witnesses that John identifies and pray and ask God to help you to understand this part of his word. Pray that you wouldn't fall into the danger of verse 39, that you are only studying the scriptures because you, in, that you think that in them you have eternal life. These scriptures are testifying about Jesus. And so as we dig into this section, we want to see what this part of God's word teaches us about Jesus because it's in him that we have life. Remember, John gives us his purpose statement in John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, where he tells us that he is giving us evidence, evidence which calls for belief, belief which leads to life through Jesus. And that's what we're seeing here. He's building the evidence because he wants us to believe so that we might have life. So as always, I'm going to just show you um, a few of the key things that I saw in this section. Uh, one of the tools that we're using in this section is just to uh, separate out the characters. And the key characters that we see here is Jesus himself talking. And he identifies a number of things that God the Father says and then some other witnesses. So looking at what Jesus says about himself. I'm just going to highlight all of that quickly. So just some of the key places where we see um, Jesus talking about different things that the, the, those that testify say about him. Witness number one is found here in verse 32. And then in this section here from verse 37. And that is the witness about Jesus from his father. So this other who testifies is God the Father. And he tells us that God the Father testifies concerning Jesus. So it just highlights all the places that we see God the Father in focus in this section. Witness number two is John the Baptist. Witness number three is the works that Jesus is doing. So the signs and the wonders that all grow the evidence. That's witness number three, not number one. Witness number four is the scriptures. And then witness five Moses. And so these five witnesses are all testifying. Uh, so it's like a court scene and this idea of testifying or giving testimony is key in this section. And all of their testimony is about Jesus. So Jesus is the one speaking here and he says, it's about me. God the Father testifies about me. Um, he has testified concerning me. The scriptures testify about me. And Moses wrote about me. So Jesus is showing that all of this testimony is pointing in the same direction, showing that he is who the whole scripture is looking ahead to. All scripture is about Jesus. And he wanted uh, these Jewish leaders who he was speaking to, to hear this. And if you go through the witness of God the Father, you think about all the things, the promises that God the Father made. Those promises are fulfilled in Jesus. Um, John the Baptist was a, a witness who they had met and listened to just in the years leading up to Jesus. And John, when he baptized Jesus in chapter 1, said, I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. 
Jesus own miracles just at the beginning of chapter 5 if we just took that that work that he did at the beginning of chapter 5 where we see his miracles at play making the lame man walk that testimony shows that he is indeed the son of God and Jesus wanted them to know that all these scriptures that they so diligently studied were all pointing to him saying that he is the one that you've been waiting for And Moses, who gave the law that they were so diligent in trying to follow, Moses was the one who Jesus says will accuse you because you haven't understood that he was actually talking about me. Jesus speaks in this section a bit more about belief. He says, you don't believe God the Father who sent me and therefore his word doesn't dwell in you. It's a massive statement. Then he's saying, how can you believe here? Verse 41 to 44 show that actually they they don't have the love of God in their hearts. Massive statement. They are not seeking the glory um, of God. Rather, they are trying to just accept glory from one another. And that is their pride is stopping them from believing. And then Jesus says, if you had believed Moses, if you really understood what he was saying, then you would believe in me because he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? So Jesus making massive, massive claims here, saying you have all of these witnesses. They're all testifying concerning me, about me, about me. It's all about Jesus. But the Jewish leaders had missed it. And as a result, they had missed the life eternal that Jesus came to bring. And Jesus wanted them to know this life. They were studying the scriptures because they thought that in these scriptures they would get the eternal life that God had promised. But Jesus is saying, you've missed the point. As someone has put it really nicely, when they said that the Bible is a wonderful window, but we must look through that window to see the beautiful realities of Christ and God. Now, they were just studying the window. They were studying the scriptures, but they weren't looking through the window of those scriptures to see Jesus. And that's the real challenge in this section. John wants us to see that all the witnesses are all pointing in the same direction, and they're all saying, look, the one you've been waiting for is here. Believe in him, because it's in him that you may have life. Yet you refuse to come to me, Jesus says, to have life because it's in Jesus that life is found. And this section also gives us fuel when we're speaking to somebody who says, well, there, isn't, there really isn't enough evidence. John is showing us, well, the weight of evidence is massive. God himself has given us so much evidence in the Old Testament. Uh, John the Baptist came as a another witness Jesus works if you seriously consider them the weight of evidence just keeps growing the whole of scripture grows this testimony about Jesus even the books of Moses the first five books of the Bible they are bearing witness to Jesus the weight of evidence is massive and the call is to consider study that evidence but not just that as evidence study it as the words that are pointing us to this one in whom life is found. And so as we dig in, we want to pray that we don't fall into the same trap as the Jewish leaders and end up just studying the witnesses, but not actually studying the one that all of the witnesses of Scripture are pointing to. Because we have God's written word completed, and we don't want to be those who diligently study the book because we think that the book will give us eternal life. We want to diligently study the scriptures because the scriptures point us to Jesus and only in Jesus can we have life. So as you dig in further, I pray that this part of God's word would cause you to rejoice in who Jesus is, that all the witness of scripture is pointing to him. Uh, Thank the Lord that we have all these witnesses so that we can actually know him. And I pray that as you teach this to others, that it will cause your group or or those that you teach to be those 
who rejoice in God's word, who have a very high view of God's word, but that as we dig into that word, we are digging in in order to know Jesus more so that we might live more faithfully for his glory. So God bless as you dig in further. Thank you.